What you got there, Toby? Okay. Still rolling, right? Yes, it is. Okay, so um, I guess we're on to part four now. It's been it's been a mildly unproductive week, but uh, it's a lot of productivity has happened that it doesn't look very productive, uh, if that's a thing. But let's see. Uh, the wings are on it now, and it 
this is like my big concern with this project because this is where everything has to be critically aligned. Everything has to, shut up. Everything has to come together really well and fit good, mainly with the uh, the spars and stuff. Because if they're just off a little bit, the whole airplane's twisted and it looks stupid. It, it, it'll look wonky and be weird, but it'll, it'll probably be fine. But luckily, everything came up pretty damn straight as far as I'm concerned. Isn't that it, just styrofoam with holes and one layer of glass? Yeah, actually, back here, there's really nothing more than styrofoam, glass, and a trailing edge of balsa wood. So that's all that is. So you can't walk on it or anything? Oh, I can walk on this. I've actually walked on it before the fiberglass, which you'll see now. But also you can stand on this thing now, just fine. So nothing's happening. Maybe creak to crack a little bit, but we're totally, we're, we're all good. So there's really no reason for this to be this strong. And I don't think anyone's gonna stand on anyone's other, anyone else's ultralight. Cause you probably did this with something more traditionally done you'll probably go through the covering. So that's more than adequate. And I think I'm just gonna stick with one layer of two ounce cloth for that. The landing gear is done. This actually came out fairly well. I think these will be all right for the first uh, couple of flights. There is no suspension, so you have to land smooth, but this is this plane is meant to fly, not to crash. So that's the whole thing with that. And also, if you kind of noticed, I put cabling around this uh, this bolt for a reason. Since this, is a, uh, since this is a very experimental, like a power plant, I have to deal with the issue of crashing out in an open field somewhere. And usually if you have landing gear sticking down, you hit soybeans and all that, it tends to tangle up and it rips you face first down to the ground and really messes up your wing spar because if this if this gets kinked at all, I throw the airplane away. I'm done. I'm not I'm not gonna repair it. It's it's done after that if this thing gets broken. Uh, these things right here uh, where, are where the uh, wing joins into. This is 4130 strip steel. Uh, that should be more than adequate. I know that Pete and Pole uses this. I think they use something a little I think they use the same stuff. But I think the bolts might be smaller because I'm using AN5 hardware times two, and then AN4 back there. And also, you have to remember, this is the bottom wing. I have another top wing to do up there that's going to be built the exact same way. So that's even more overkill and more ridiculous. I got to go at the dog. He's running off. Okay, question time. Uh, there's some good ones in, or questions and statements, I guess. You forgot the metal inlay at 603, the one that keeps the wire in shape. Please like so you notice this. I don't ask for likes, but this is an exception. Yep, I am aware of that. I did screw up. These things right here, uh, wrong one. Apparently I'm supposed to put the thimble in these, but yeah, I thought about it and you know, as you pull in these more, I guess these will start to fray and this will break over time. So these will end up being replaced pretty soon. I might actually redo a lot of this anyway, so I'm not super concerned with my first run. And also it's a pretty cheap to remake. So we'll, we will definitely be doing that. Uh, let's see. Does he do the puppy head tilt? Yeah. Okay, back to the questions. But how we get it out of the room? Uh, good question. I mean, it is out, but look what we had to go through. B-roll. Since you're so concerned about the elevators, why not a second set of cables for the other side of the plane for redundancy? Two e equals one and one equals none. Good point. I did think about it and I think I will run an additional set of uh, pulleys and cables out here. The thing is for this, I might stick with the crappy cable system I have for the first flight. It's not gonna fail on this first flight, but with the thimbles the way they are, over time they will machine their way through and they will fail. So that is a failure point. I'll probably do the first maiden, just get it out of the way and then bring this again because I'm only gonna fly it once this year because uh, I have a lot of other things I need to be doing. So we'll get that out of the way. I'll bring it back in. There's gonna be a lot of teardowns because I already want to change a lot of things, mainly the control yoke, well, control stick, I guess, really, will be changed and I will have two sets of uh, pulleys and cables going back and forth, but they're gonna be redone anyway. So that's why I'm not gonna change that specifically right now, but I will change it right after the first flight. Okay, question, or this guy, this guy's concerned. Please learn to crimp cables properly if you want to live. I feel like you're slowly underestimating the aerodynamic forces and vibrations uh, the parts you have will be subjected to. Borrow a real crimper and get a copy of the FAA's AC 43.13-1B for examples of safe techniques you can use to complete basic tasks or such as this or you will end up injured or worse. Sincerely, a concerned aircraft mechanic. Uh, I did buy the, the cheap swaging tool, but it came from aircraft spruce and it seems like people have used that. 
I don't know. Is there, are there any other APs in the comment sections that have used those tools I specifically? No. I know you're supposed to get the no, go or no go gauge with that. I'll probably pick that up. But it, it should be fine. I mean, they sell it. People have used it. Why doesn't it work? Okay, this one's pretty funny. It's a win-win situation. Either you build an epic working ultralight and fly around, or you take off, go to a thousand feet in the air before everything breaks simultaneously, and your story will be told as a cautionary trail to all airplane builders. Well, I hope it's not the latter, but um, that's why I'm pretty much going through all the checks and stuff. We are going to do a, uh, a load test where we spin this thing upside down, supported by the uh, fuselage or the main, main member here, I guess, and then start sandbagging it out to the ends of the wings. I'll probably do it up to... 600 to 800 pounds for the initial flight because the initial flight is going to be a simple 1G flight that I can prove it at least flies Then before I actually get my flying done next season, we're going to do it again We'll load it up to about probably a thousand five hundred to two thousand pounds because I would like to get past 4G's Which would be more than insane for an ultralight, but if we can do 4G's that's totally fine And I don't need to push it any further than that. What happens if you break it? Then I break it <laughs> then we're done, but I can say I at least flew it. That's why I'm not going to do the ultimate test right away i'm just gonna test it just enough to be safe to go fly and then we'll bring it back and do the ultimate test before i actually try any stupid air back such as like a, a loop or a roll or stall turns or anything of the uh, nature like that okay last one you should do a live video on youtube for the takeoff it will be awesome and you could get some extra crash god forbid if anything goes wrong and you need to fix the plane or yourself tune in for the live stream of the maiden flight that'll be in part seven coming out uh whenever yeah, uh, I think that's about it. I think I might actually live stream the maiden flight. So you, you want to make sure you turn on the notification bell for that and stick around for that. Um, right now I'm planning mid-October to late October as far as the maiden flight goes. I have everything coming and as far as the wings goes, those are actually being hotwired by a manufacturer. I can already hotwire them myself and I mean it doesn't really make sense for me to hotwire them because I, I have to do little sections like this when they can hotwire an 8 foot piece because they have a CNC uh, wire cutter and it, it makes a lot more sense to do that. And plus it was actually really cheap. So I'm going to do that because it speeds up the process because I can get the wings done in a week or less. Then we can move on to the power system, which will be part six, and then maiden flight, which is part seven. So you want to stick around for that. And uh, that's it. Did he sneeze? Yeah. Oh, are you hot? Do you want to get some water? Say bye to the camera. Bye. Subscribe. Eat the microphone. Low test. A puppy, you, and now me. I'm not concerned. The landing gear is definitely strong enough.